Hey everyone, it's Pam and I'm here today with another collection video. This time I'll be talking about the PlayStation 1. So the PlayStation 1 first came out in North America on September 9th, 1995, and I did not get one when it first came out. In fact, I didn't get one until a couple years after it was released. At this point, I was pretty much exclusively playing PC games. I loved point-and-click adventures and RPGs, and I was pretty happy playing those. And it was actually a friend who, a couple years later, just would not stop talking about Final Fantasy VII, so that must have been in 97, uh, two years after the console first released, that I finally got one. I got my mom to pick one up for me on her way home from work, and then, of course, the next day I pretended to be sick so that I could stay home all day to play video games. I did not know at this point that you needed a memory card in order to save your game because that was sort of a new concept to me, an external memory card. So I played Final Fantasy for about eight hours before I died and had to start all over again, but honestly I was so excited to be playing that it wasn't too bad. When I play my PS1 games now, I mostly use the PS2 Slim. I actually had to replace mine recently because it broke. Uh, we do have a PS1 as well, but I tend to just like being able to play the PS1 and PS2 on the same console, and I've got it hooked up so that I can play it on an HD TV. Uh, sometimes I use a Frame Meister, and sometimes I use a special PS2 um, HDMI converter. So let's get on to the games. I'm going to go through them all alphabetically. And the first one is Apocalypse, starring Bruce Willis. This is kind of interesting because as far as I know, Apocalypse isn't, you know, a movie or anything. So it's just a video game starring an action star. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. Uh, this game is actually Will's, so I haven't played it myself, but it looks cool. It's sort of like a third-person action shooter. Um, when you're playing Bruce Willis, your goal is to defeat the four horsemen of the apocalypse. It's got some interesting stories and characters from what I've seen. I don't know if I'm ever gonna play this myself, but it does seem like a fun game. Next up is Blazing Dragons. This is one I picked up at a swap maybe a year or two ago. I actually hadn't heard of the game at the time, but as soon as I saw that it had the voices of Terry Jones and Cheech Marin, that was a big selling point, and I believe that Terry Jones was actually sort of the writer and creator of this, and I've always been a huge Monty Python fan, so I knew that this combined with Point and Click Adventure would be right up my alley. I haven't had a chance to actually play through it. I've sort of started it just to see how it looks and sounds, and it holds up pretty well. The graphics still look very nice. They're kind of, um, they're the kind of graphics that age well as opposed to a lot of things on the PS1. And yeah, it just looks to have that Monty Python sense of humor. You play a dragon who is an inventor and he is going on a big quest and it's full of kind of ridiculous characters that you would expect out of the mind of someone from Monty Python. And I definitely do want to play this in its entirety at some point. Next up is Bomberman Party Edition. I had never been a player of the Bomberman series until I played Saturn Bomberman, which is an excellent game. Uh, this looks similar. It honestly doesn't look nearly as nice as the Saturn version. It's got a single player mode. It's got multiplayer battles. I played a little of it. It's sort of I don't know, since the, Saturn, since the Saturn version is the only basis of comparison I have, this one kind of falls a little short. The graphics didn't look as good, it didn't sound as good, um, I don't know, I feel like this is meant more, since it says Party Edition, to be a sort of multiplayer game, but since I play mostly single player, um, this one wasn't really hitting the mark for me. 
Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Everyone knows and mostly loves this one. This is actually the first Castlevania game I ever played. I never played the originals on Nintendo until more recently. Uh, I remember borrowing this from a friend who I worked with um, when I was a teenager. And it is a cool game. It, the controls and things are better than the earlier games. Um, it looks really nice. It sounds really nice. I've still never actually finished the game. Uh, the first time I played it, I got to a point where I just didn't know where I was supposed to be going and I got frustrated and quit. Um, I started playing it again fairly recently, sometime last year, and got probably a little bit further than I did the first time and then I just sort of trailed off. Um, no particular reason, I think. Actually, the reason was probably that the last save point was quite a ways away from the place where I found myself continually dying, so I got a little bit frustrated. I don't know, I would really like to say that I've beaten this game at some point. Um, it just hasn't happened yet. <laughs> Civilization 2. Uh, Civilization is one of the sort of original grand 4X strategy games. Uh, Civ 2 was the first in the series that I played, although it was on PC at the time. Um, I didn't even know that it was something that was available on console. I had thought that Civilization Revolutions was the first time that the game was ever consoleized. I haven't played this yet, I just picked it up because I like the PC version so much. Uh, this is the one that has the throne room where when you do things and your people are happy with you, they will make offerings so you can decorate your throne room, which I always really loved that part of and I was sad when they took it out of later games. Um, I actually just wanted this because I like Civ 2 on PC. I don't think I'll ever actually play this on console. It seems like it wouldn't translate to consoles and to be uh, playing with a gamepad very well. Um, but yeah, when I saw this, I just sort of needed to pick it up to have it on my shelf. Cool Borders! Cool Borders 2. This is one of the games that I had on my PlayStation when I was in high school. Uh, I played this a lot. It was really fun to go down the hills and do the tracks, um, tricks. There was multiple game modes that you could do. There was timed things. There was scores based on the tricks you would do. There was uh, multiple characters. I don't think too many. I think only four characters that you could choose from and you could choose your gear. Uh, it was a lot of fun. It actually made me pick up snowboarding equipment. Uh, I went out, I got a board, I got the pants, I got the boots, I got everything, and then I went out to an actual hill and remembered, hey, I hate cold and snow. This sucks. So that was a giant waste of money, which I'm sure my mother was very pleased with. Uh, yeah, Cool Borders 2, though, one of the original games that I spent a lot of time with on my PS1. Crash Team Racing. This is another one that is Will's. Um, I actually never played this uh, on the PS1 or at all, really. I might pick up the remaster when it comes out later this year. Uh, going through this collection is reminding me of a couple things I need to put on my wish list because I've noticed that uh, Crash Bandicoot 2 was one of the games that I had when I was a teenager and played a lot on PS1 and I don't have it now, so I do want to pick that up. Um, yeah, Crash Team Racing, don't have a whole lot to say about it. It looks a lot like Mario Kart, except with Crash, obviously. Uh, yeah, I'll probably wait until the remaster to actually give this a play. This is Fear Effect, one that I haven't ever played through. Uh, before this video, I did pop it in the system just to see what it was like. This game appealed to me just because of the characters on it. Uh, the story is that you're tracking down a runaway girl. I think she's 18 and uh, she's in danger, so you have to find her and save her. Um, I probably won't ever play this when I did pop it in the system. I found it uses tank controls and I just do not have the patience to deal with that. Which is unfortunate because for a 3D sort of polygonal game, this visually holds up much better than a lot of other PS1 games too. The, um, do the, um, 
the character models are a little I don't know how to how to describe it really like they're stylized in such a way that their faces still still look kind of that PS1 weird but they look better uh, than a lot of other games so I'm just sad about the tank controls because I just I just can't handle those and have no desire to fight with controls in order to play a game so this is actually one I'll probably uh, get rid of at some point. Final Fantasy 7, the game that made me get a PlayStation. I remember my friend Jen at school, she would be talking about how Sephiroth was trying to destroy the planet and Yuffie stole all her materia. And I was like, girl, what are you talking about? And she said it was Final Fantasy 7. So one day I went over to her house after school and she played a little bit of it and I was like, okay, I need this game, I need a PlayStation 1, and went out and got one basically the next day. So yeah, I don't know what else there is to say about this game. I've played through it a number of times. It's really the game that got me back into console gaming after not having a console since the NES. Um, yeah, it's, it's great. They've remastered it and re-released it many times. They are apparently doing a remake, which I was really excited about when they announced it like three years ago and then we haven't really heard much since. But yeah, I don't know, I don't know, this is sort of like, I think a game that almost everyone has in their PS1 collection and for good reason. Of course, the next one is Final Fantasy VIII. This one's a bit of a black sheep in the Final Fantasy family. Um, I did enjoy it. I wasn't a huge fan of Squall and some of the other characters, but you know, it was still a grand epic fantasy that was fun to play. Um, I didn't like the draw system for the spells, but I still, you know, I played through this game probably two or three times. It was neat how it went between the two different timelines and the different characters. Uh, it's probably the one that I've replayed the least out of the Final Fantasy games. Um, yeah, it's it's okay. The cut, I remember the cutscenes being so, so beautiful when I played it, but when you actually look back at the in-game footage, it looks pretty bad. <laughs> uh, which is kind of the case with a lot of PlayStation 1 games, unfortunately. But, uh, yeah, have to have all the Final Fantasies on PS1, so this is the second one. And the third one, of course, is Final Fantasy IX. This took me a while to get and play. I remember first seeing this and seeing these character designs and they're kind of like cute and chibi uh, and it didn't appeal to me at all. I kind of saw it and was like, oh no, I'm not into that art style. Uh, so it took me a while. I feel like I didn't actually play this game until after the PS2 came out, but when I finally did, I was very pleasantly surprised because in terms of gameplay and story, I actually think this is better than 7 and 8. Uh, it was just a lot of fun. It went back to sort of, you know, the kind of classical fantasy setting from the earlier games as opposed to the more modern setting that 7 and 8 had. Um, I really loved Vivi and some of the other characters in it. Garnet was great. It had kind of a, a very typical love story, but it was very nice and it had some great characters and the visuals were stunning. Um, eventually I came around on the kind of graphical and the, and the design style for these characters and I think it's actually one of the stronger Final Fantasy games to play. This is the fifth element, and this is one I've never played. I actually missed this one. I, I had been putting everything in the system to just play for five minutes to see what it was like, and I completely forgot about this. This is a game I totally bought just because I love Fifth Element, the movie, so much. Uh, looking at the back of the case, it looks real, real ugly now. Um, I'm sure it doesn't play all that well either, but um, yeah, I do want to be able to say I've at least tried all my games, so I'll probably put this one in a little bit later just to see what it's like. Though honestly, 3D fighting games really aren't my style. This is Fox Hunt. Uh, you know how I love my corny FMV games. This might just be the corniest one I've ever tried. Uh, this is one of the most rare 
games on the PS1. I was very lucky, I found it in a shop, I think it was $20. Uh, so I got a very good deal on it. I finally tried playing it a couple months ago and it's so, so bad. Like, I can, I can get past a lot when it comes to FMV games, but this is just so terribly, terribly corny. It's about a guy who's just like your average, everyday regular Joe and he becomes a spy somehow and the way it's designed is terrible so when you're it's like you know 3d you're looking in your apartment and you can you know go forward or turn to the right or look at something on the table and there's a little cutscene of the guy between every single movement so if you want to move right you get a little loading and then he goes and he just like turns to the right and you see him do it. And he's always making a stupid silly face while he's doing it too. And it's just like, oh, it's just so redundant and irritating and ugh. Like, <laughs> I'm so forgiving of these games, but this is terrible. And I will probably not play it any more than I have. I, I really wanted to review it at some point, but I don't think I can make myself play more than the 15 minutes that I already have. Gran Turismo, this is another one that I had on my PS1 as a teenager. I spent a lot of time playing this. This is really one of the only racing games that I've ever gotten into, which makes sense because at the time I was probably like 15, 16, getting ready to get my driver's license, so driving was much more exciting to me than it is now. I remember how they had the licensing system, and that was interesting, how you had to do the different courses in order to be able to register for different races. Uh, the game has a really great soundtrack. I remember that it had garbage on it, and garbage is like one of my favorites. Although the soundtrack was very limited like I don't think there was actually many songs so for the amount of time I played it I heard those songs over and over and over again but yeah this is sort of one of the classic racing games and uh, yeah it's good. Next up is Legend of Dragoon. Uh, the PS1 is really where I got into JRPGs. Uh, I played some on the PS2 as well but this is what got me into the genre. So after playing Final Fan the Final Fantasy games, I was looking for more games that were similar to it, so I remember finding this one, which looked really good. Um, all the character models are, at least in the artwork, are really nice. Uh, the game has these great transformation scenes where you turn into dragoons. Uh, the story is honestly not all that memorable. I remember going to the moon at some point. Uh, one of the things I really liked about it though was that the combat was a little bit more active. Uh, there was, when you do it, an attack, there was like these squares and you had to like line up the squares to like execute a good attack. Uh, so I always like when they take a somewhat generic turn-based JRPG combat system and just, just add that little timing element to put a little bit more interest in there. Uh, one memory I have about this game is that I think it was getting everyone's ultimate weapons or something. I was trying to do that and at one point you go to the moon and it didn't tell me like this is the point of no return. If you go here you're not going to be able to go back and do your other things and I was still missing one like legendary weapon or whatever they're called. and. When I found out that I couldn't go back and finish it, I got so mad that I deleted my save game and just forgot about the game for a year before later coming back to it and having to play through the entire game all over again in order to finish it. This is The Lost World, Jurassic Park. I love my Jurassic Park games and I buy all of them that I can get my hands on. Uh, this one is a cool holographic cover, I don't know if you can see that on camera. Uh, this one's pretty cool. It's sort of, it calls itself a 3D game. It's more 2.5D. Uh, you play as a dinosaur, sort of doing a little bit of plat action platforming. Uh, you start out and you're just playing a compi, which are like the little teeny dinosaurs, and you know, you just have to go through avoiding obstacles, fighting the other dinosaurs that you come into contact with. It's got nice short little levels to play, and it's honestly quite fun. I've only played through the first few levels, but I'll probably go back and try to finish this one. 
Lunar Silver Story Complete. I've actually never played any of these games. I've been trying to get back into JRPGs. I've found I've kind of lost interest in them lately. Lost Odyssey was the last one that could really hold my attention. Oh, that's a lie. There's another one that I just played recently that I'll talk about. Um, so I thought I'd pick up this. A lot of people recommended this when I talked about my Sega CD set, uh, but I have it for the PS1 instead. Uh, yeah, I just hear a lot of good things. I haven't actually played it yet, and I really like how this is... Um, like the packaging and everything on this. It's one of the working designs games and they always do really nice covers and things. Uh, there's a few things in this. It's got the actual game discs here. Oh, there's a girl's bum on the back of this. Um, there's a cloth map. I'm gonna drop everything. <laughs> there is a cloth map which is nice. I always like maps. And then there is a nice sort of hardcover manual that comes with it. It's even got a little ribbon so you can keep your spot and it's got, you know, nice artwork and things. So yeah, it's a really nice piece. I just need to actually play the game. Next up is Oddworld Abe's Odyssey. I don't know what it was that made me pick this one up. I never played this sort of when I originally had my PS1. I have since played it, but I've played the remastered version because it was on Xbox Game Pass. So uh, yeah, I haven't actually played the PS1 version. This is a cool kind of platformer, puzzle platformer game. You play this weird little guy here um, and it's got a very dark story. Um, much darker than I was expecting it to be. Uh, I, I would like to play some more. I think they've since taken it off Game Pass, so I might give the actual PS1 version a whirl at some point. Next up is Parasite Eve, which is one of my favorite games on the PS1. This is another one that I had on the system when I was a teenager. I remember getting this for Christmas. Uh, I opened it up in the morning and I was so excited to get it, uh, but we were having our family over and my mom wouldn't just let me sit in the basement and play PlayStation all day. So rather than play it, I just put the game in the system and I let that awesome opening cinematic play just over and over and over again, basically all day. So it was always playing when I went down there and I would like show my family, I'd be like, wanna see something cool? Come on, come on, see this. So everyone at my house that day got to watch the Parasite Eve opening cinematic. I don't know if anyone else was quite as impressed as I was. Uh, this is just a fantastic game. It combines sort of horror and JRPG, which I really like. I love the main character, Aya Brea. Uh, the story is neat. The monsters are like disgusting and really cool. Uh, I actually would like to play this again sometime soon, because it's been a long time since I've done a replay on it. I'd really like to actually give it a review, just to bring a little bit more attention to it. Um, I've heard that they might be doing something with the Parasite Eve series. I think there was a, I don't know, a copyright made or something not in the fairly recent past. So yeah, Parasite Eve, if you haven't played this one, I definitely recommend it. And then of course there's Parasite Eve 2. This one takes place after the first one, and I actually have not played this one yet. Maybe rather than replay the first one, I should finally get to this one. Uh, Will bought it for me for a present an, a few years ago, and I haven't gotten around to it yet, but I'm actually gonna put this to the side because I want to play it. I haven't played it yet. Uh, it looks good. It looks like very cinematic like the first one. It's got like that kind of action-y combat rather than the turn-based combat, which is interesting. So yes, I should play this. I'm gonna put it on the other side. Rayman. This is another one I had when I first got my PlayStation 1. In fact, I think it was after Final Fantasy VII. This was probably the second 
game I got because I remember I had played it at a friend's house and really enjoyed it. Uh, this is just, I love Rayman. It's such a colorful, cheerful game. Uh, even the new Rayman games are fantastic. I really like this because when the PS1 came out, everything was going 3D and it doesn't necessarily hold up well now. Whereas with Rayman, they were just like, no, we're just gonna make a very solid 2D platformer and they really succeeded. I love how big the sprites are. Everything's just like big and colorful and detailed. Uh, it does get to be quite a challenging game, but it's just, so cute. I love when you start out, Raymond has no hands or feet and you have to like get your hands and feet as rewards for completing levels. And uh, yeah, this is probably one of my favorite platforming series until they went 3D. This is Rhapsody, a musical adventure. And this is the JRPG that I played recently that I mentioned just a little while ago. I actually did a review of this if you want to check it out. I first learned about this from Daria Plays. Uh, Daria's got a great channel, you should also go check her out if you haven't yet. Uh, you play this girl and she can talk to puppets. So she basically has a group of puppets who do all of her fighting for her. It is a musical adventure as it says, so there are musical numbers that are actually really great. There's some really good ones, especially the villain songs. They're very catchy, um, they're very well done. The musical numbers are actually really what makes the game special. In terms of the combat and things, it tries to make it like a like a strategy um, RPG and doesn't totally succeed uh, just because of how simple it is, it is and how sort of little effect um, actually moving around the battlefield and the different abilities have. But yeah, this is definitely one that stands out because of those musical numbers and it also does some cool things around like subverting the usual tropes that you would see in this kind of game. Uh, so check out my review of that if you haven't seen it. So next, this is Ridge Racer Revolution, and this one is Will's. I haven't played this. I'm just holding this up because it brings to mind that I don't actually have the original Ridge Racer game. That's the one that I had, again, probably with Final Fantasy VII and Rayman. Ray Ridge Racer was probably like the next game I got on PS1 because I had played it at a friend's house. Uh, yeah, it's just a good sort of more arcade style racing game than Grand Theft Auto. I remember really liking the music and the announcer. Uh, yeah, put a lot of time in that one too. This is Sheep, which is one of the more odd PS1 titles I've ever played. I hadn't ever heard of this one, and I saw it at a swap last year, and I'm always just excited when I see a game that I've never heard of before because I've just, you know, spent a lot of time looking at games, so I've heard of most things. You play a sheep herder in this. Each sheep herder has their own kind of look and style. The character models are actually a little bit scary. I don't like them all that much. And you basically just have to chase sheep through obstacles, around obstacles, and finally get them into a truck. It's kind of cool. It's got a very wacky opening cinematic that's kind of just like, whoa, okay. <laughs> it's pretty funny, actually. Um, yeah, this is... This is an interesting one. I really like weird games, and this is definitely weird. Next is Silent Hill. I got this one fairly late in the PS1's life. Um, I was an older teenager, like near the end of my teenage years by the time I got this one. Um, again, I think a friend had given it to me or lent it to me but it was just too scary for me. I played a little bit of it, but as soon as I got that radio and it would go off when monsters were near me, I was just like, nope, 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 and I would turn the game off and never play it again. Uh, I have since attempted to play through more. Um, I did get up to the school, the one I played through, I don't know, maybe a year or two ag ago, but again, it was just too creepy and I didn't want to play it, um, so I've never actually finished Silent Hill. Who doesn't want to spice up their life? This is the Spice Girls game, and it's not very good. I only bought it because 
I loved the Spice Girls when I was like in grade eight. Uh, <laughs> that's when they came out. Uh, this game is sort of like a, a music maker from what I could see. I put it on and played a little. I picked my favorite Spice Girl, which is um, Ginger Spice. And you can kind of like remix their songs, which is weird. Uh, you can apparently also do dance numbers, though I never got to that part of it. And there's some behind the scenes footage with the Spice Girls, I believe from the movie. Um, yeah, it, it really did nothing for me when I tried it out, but I just, I just love those Spice Girls. Star Ocean Second Story is in my opinion, the best JRPG on the PS1. This is a story that combines sort of space travel with fantasy setting. There's two different protagonists that you can choose between. You can be Claude, who is like an ensign in like a space force, or you can be Rena, who's a girl with mysterious magical powers in a small little town. Uh, and as you play through it, depending on who you're playing, you can recruit different characters, you can see different scenes. Uh, it's really, really great. It's got a fantastic crafting system. There's an Iron Chef tournament in it. Uh, it's just wonderful. Uh, it It's odd and it's got great action combat. It's not turn-based. People will scream out the spells or the abilities they're doing and I really, I really love Star Ocean Second Story. If you haven't played it, I definitely recommend giving it a go. I did have this on my PS1 originally. Uh, I remember I sold it to EB Games back when you could actually sell games for money. And from then on, I was so mad at myself. I always went back trying to find it and never could. So I just got this copy back, um, I guess when I started collecting again, like five years ago or so. But yeah, this is really good. If you like JR JRPGs at all, I definitely recommend checking this out. This is Tecmo's Deception, which I haven't played through that much of, but it just seems like such an interesting game. Uh, I'm just gonna read the back here. You must decide who lives and who dies, as in life, Tecmo's Deception will hold you responsible for your actions. Everything you do, every place you go, everyone you meet has a reason. Are you seeking revenge, resurrection, or redemption? It's your decision. It's just, it sounds so interesting, but whenever I put it in the system, it's just so ugly, and it's like free roaming 3D PS1 graphics, and it's just like, ugh, it's, it, it's ugly, but it's so interesting. Um, you meet characters, and you don't know whether to trust them or not. You can set traps. It's not totally clear what you're doing here. Um, even though I don't play these games myself, it kind of reminds me of, like, the Dark Souls games in that way, that y you don't know exactly what you're doing, people seem to know more than you, there's kind of like lore beneath the surface but no one's spoon feeding it to you. Um, so yeah, this is one It seems super interesting and I would really like to play it, I'm just having like this mental block with getting over the graphics and what the game could be. This is Theme Hospital, one of my favorite business sims. You are a hospital administrator building a series of hospitals, treating people for a series of ridiculous and comedic ailments. Uh, this is one I play actually on PC. I've never played the PS1 version. I actually got the PC version right here. But uh, yeah, it was just another one where when I started collecting, I was like, oh, I like that game. Not on this system, but I'll pick it up anyway. Uh, really fun. They recently did like a spiritual successor called Two Point Hospital, which I've also done a review of if you want to check that out. Uh, so yeah, I'm not totally sure how well this plays on PS1. It's not overly complicated like Civilization is, so I think it probably plays fine. But yeah, one of my favorites, just on PC. Um, Jamalemi. 
This is Unjammer Lammy. It is sort of a successor to Parappa the Rapper. Uh, Parappa is not a game I actually had, but I had a demo disc which had the level with crack, 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 the egg can do the ball. And I played that over and over and over back when I was a teenager. This one stars Lammy, Lammy, who was a character in that game, I believe, and she's voiced by Sarah Ramirez, who's from Grey's Anatomy, which is kind of cool. Uh, it's the same kind of game. It's very, very similar, you know, rhythm. Uh, and I find, I don't know if it's just because I always play on an HD TV, but I find the timing almost impossible to get right. Um, I play a fair amount of rhythm games. I'm not fantastic at them, but I'm decent at them. And both Parappa and Lammy are games that just, no matter how hard I try, I cannot get the timing right. And I kind of feel like it's the game and not me. Um, so I haven't played too much of this. This is Vandal Hearts. I actually know very little about this. I saw it at a swap and it seemed very cheap for what looks like a strategy JRPG. So I picked it up just thinking it might be a good investment. I'm not sure how correct I was in that, but yeah, I probably should have looked more into this before I started filming the video, but I haven't actually tried this one. More Jurassic Park. This one is Warpath and it is a dinosaur fighting game. You pick a dinosaur and you fight another dinosaur. Uh, fighting games aren't really my cup of tea. I don't like to play too many of them, though I did try this and I got to be a T-Rex and bite another dinosaur a whole bunch. So um, for a fighting game, the ability to be a, a dinosaur automatically elevates it, but still, one that I really just have in my collection because I like Jurassic Park so much I don't see myself putting a whole lot of time into this one. This is Wing Commander 4, The Price of Freedom. I have never actually played a Wing Commander game. It's one of those ones that appeals to me that every time I see them I'm like, oh I should really play that and then I just never get around to playing it. It combines sort of like flight I don't, I don't know if I'd say flight sim, but it involves like space combat and strategy and things with FMV. This particular one has Mark Hamill, uh, Mal Malcolm McDowell, John Reese davies uh, So it's got a lot of sort of real actors in this. But again, yeah, I just, I just never get around to actually playing these despite how appealing they are to me. XCOM UFO Defense. The new XCOM games by Firaxis are some of my favorite games ever. I've always wanted to get back, or not get back into, get into for the first time the original XCOM games. Uh, I just haven't really been able to. Like the usability and accessibility of the new games is just so much better. Uh, I remember when I first started this one, I think it was actually the PC version, not PS1, but I started playing it and it was just like, Here's the Geoscape, have fun. I was like, oh, I have no idea what I'm supposed to be doing. So just the complete lack of instruction or tutorial kind of turned me off. But it's just one of those ones where like, I feel like I'm missing out not having played the originals. One thing I just have to say, while well, I've got this long box in my hand, these things drive me nuts. This is the correct way. This is the correct way. The spine, upside down. Why did they do this? Why? Sorry, a little break in filming there. The next game is Xena, Warrior Princess. This is one of my favorite shows. I used to watch this every week with my mom. Uh, now I've got the full series and I've actually been re-watching it over the last few months. Uh, again, this is one of the games that I bought just because I like the show. I did try it out and find out it's really not at all for me. It's a 3D, action fighter game which looks pretty dreadful. It doesn't use any of the original actors' voices, so it also doesn't sound that great, and it's really just not the kind of game I want to play. I just have it because I love Xena. Next up is Xenogears. This is not one that I had, but I remember having a demo disc for this, which was about, I don't know, the first hour or so of the game. 
I don't remember where the demo disc came from. I think it was with Final Fantasy VII, but I'm not positive. Uh, so I played the demo back when I was in high school, and I really enjoyed it. It was sort of JRPG with mechs that you got to fight in. I didn't get too much into the story yet, uh, but I wanted to pick this up just because I've always wanted to see the rest of it. I just haven't gone around to doing so yet. And last but not least, The X-Files, another one of my favorite shows from the 90s that I used to watch every week. This is an FMV game. It was also on PC, although I did play the PS1 version when it first came out. Um, it's pretty fun. It's interesting in that you don't play as Mulder and Scully, probably because they were busy filming the show or would have wanted too much money to act in this. Uh, so they're, they're in it, just not as much. You're playing a different person, Agent Wilmore, who is searching for Mulder and Scully who have disappeared. And it plays pretty well. It's sort of like a point-and-click FMV adventure. It has a cool story that brings in a lot of tie-ins from the show. There's a lot of little Easter eggs. Uh, Skinner is a fairly big character in it. The lone gunmen make an appearance. Uh, this is another one that I have reviewed on the channel a number of years ago, so check that out if you'd like to. Uh, yeah, this is a good one. I really like this, although it gets a little difficult and a bit frustrating at the end. Overall, it's like a nice standalone X-Files episode. So that's it. That's my PS1 collection. It's one of my favorite consoles to collect for. I like having a mix of games that I had when I originally had the system, as well as games that I had seen and never gotten a chance to play, and things that have just looked interesting as I go to swaps and things. Let me know in the comments if there is anything I've showed here that you'd like a further look at, maybe a review somewhere down the line, um, and let me know if you think anything is missing and if there's any great PS1 games that I should look to adding to my collection. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.